Streptococcus suis represents one of the major threats in swine. The first contaminations can occur during parturition, and the disease is prevalent in all types of production. It is characterized by septicemia, meningitis, and localized arthritis and endocarditis. The infection is difficult to control by vaccination. Successful treatment depends mainly on the proper selection of antibiotics and early individual treatment at the first clinical signs. Comparing the efficacy of amoxicillin with other antimicrobials against Streptococcus suis, amoxicillin is the best optimal choice for the treatment and control. And considering the PKPD parameters of amoxicillin, Vetrimoxin LA can be considered as the best treatment of choice. Glasses disease caused by Haemophilus parasuus is present in all major swine raising countries. Haemophilus parasuus may result in systemic disease of high morbidity and mortality. Classical manifestation is the septicemia, arthritis, fibrinous polycerositis, and in some cases, pneumonia. The appropriate use of antimicrobials is important in managing this infection. According to the rational use of antimicrobials and the ban on third and fourth generation cephalosporins, amoxicillin is considered the first line of treatment. Tulithromycin seems to be clinically ineffective for the treatment of systemic infection because of its PKPD characteristics. Clostridial diseases are characteristic for a neonatal period of piglets. Affected animals cannot develop real growing potential and are predisposed to other enteric pathogens. Amoxicillin is considered an excellent drug to treat clostridiosis in piglets. The study concluded that no isolates resistant to amino penicillins were found. According to the rational use of antimicrobials, amoxicillin is an optimal choice for treating clinical cases of diarrhea in farrowing houses. Beta-lactams are the most widely used family of antibiotics because of their extended spectrum of activity and low toxicity. Currently, the global rule is to limit the prescription of cephalosporins to avoid the selection for extended spectrum beta-lactamase producing enterobacteria. However, aminopenicillins remain a mainstay first-line therapy in the treatment of a large variety of infections. Related to in vitro study, there was a rapid development of high-level resistance to cephalosporins. Results and discussion. Amoxicillin selects for mutants which have low level resistance to amoxicillin and cephalexin and are susceptible to ceftiafur. Ceftiafur selects for mutants which have low level resistance to ceftiafur and amoxicillin and high level resistance to cephalexin. Thus, cephalosporins tend to select for mutants with cross-resistance to cephalosporins and aminopenicillins, while aminopenicillins essentially select for their own resistance. Conclusions Aminopenicillins can continue to be used without any significant risk of selection for cephalosporin-resistant mutants. In contrast, Cephalosporin should be used with parsimony as a second-line therapy where amoxicillin is proven inactive. Vetramoxin LA is more efficacious against septicemic infections in piglets caused by Streptococcus suis and Haemophilus parasuis than tulithromycin. 
According to pharmacokinetics parameters of tulithromycin, we consider it as a not very effective treatment option for metaphylaxis and treatment of the infections mentioned. Betramoxin LA, with a new withdrawal period of eight days.